Hey guys, welcome back to the Way UK podcast. My name is Jesse. And I'm Zenya. Yeah, and we're a bunch of young Christians who are looking at Christianity, kind of figuring it out for ourselves yeah. as we go along. <laughs> That's what it feels like a lot. Um, but we're just starting a new series this month on Philippians. So every week, going through a different chapter, which I'm very excited for, yeah. to read the Bible. Let's go. This is epic. I'm so excited. What are you most excited for about this next month, Zenia? Fresh revelation. Mm. Every time you read the Bible, you get something new. Even if you've read the book a million times, you'll get a million new things because mm. that's how good God is. So stay tuned. You're not too good for Philippians. But anyway, first, <laughs> <laughs> let's <it>. hi- <laughs> first it. let's head over to the streets and hear what you people think. If you had a Christian friend, how would you want them to share their faith with you? I have a friend who's Christian um, and she loves um, Hillsong oh, yeah. and she loves to sing. And I love hearing about all those stories that um, like she goes to church with her cousins and her family and she like sings her heart out. She's a, an amazing singer um, and she's in the choir and everything. I think that's a really cool way to share religion and culture. And I also think food. I think food is a great way of spreading like different cultures and different religions and for me it's it's quite a personal thing so I think you should only kind of preach it if you're being asked to. I think it's really good not to be pushy and forceful because that can come off more intimidating than like you know you're trying to share your faith. I mean I think it's better if they like ask you questions because then they're more comfortable to learn about it in my opinion, because it's not good to like push it on someone. I'd probably value them living it out. That's how I um, actually came to faith. One of my friends, he really lived out the gospel and not necessarily shouting about being a Christian, but by the way he lived, I recognized that there was something and someone he was believing in and that prompted and made me look at myself. And um, I guess God used that to start a change. So Zen, this week you've been reading into Philippians a little bit, preparing our podcast. Yeah. Um, what were some initial things that stood out to you? Well, I think context is key. I think if you're going to read the Bible, know the context of the book you're reading, because mm. it will help you actually read it in the way that it was written. Um, mm. Paul here, he's writing to the church in Philippi, which is actually one of the first churches that he plants. You mm. can read about it in Acts. Um, and they were struggling a little bit. <laughs> they were going through some things. They were going through some... Um, hard times, Mm. Um, especially in the society that they were in. And um, actually Paul writes this from being in prison. You know, Mm. he was actually locked up sad times for Paul, but the church of Philippi actually did help him. They sent him like financial aid. Um, Mm. They were praying over him, partnering with him. And actually they sent somebody, this guy called Epaphroditus, which you can read about later on, or just stay tuned for the podcast because we'll get to it. (laughs) You know, yes, cheeky you plug. Um, but they actually send him to go to Paul mm. um, in prison and give him money um, to sow into him financially. Mm. And that moved Paul's spirit. It moved mm. his heart. And so when Epaphroditus came back to the church of Philippi, he came back with this with this letter that Paul writes. I think let's just get straight in, to Come be on. honest. Let's not beat around the bush. Come on. Uh, so I'm going to read uh, Philippians 1 from verse 3 says, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, Mm -hmm. always in every prayer of mine, for you are all, you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure of this, that he who has began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. Okay, I'm going to pause there for a sec. Uh, One thing I love is this is Paul's response out of being gifted. He wrote he wrote the letter after um, what was his name again? Epaphroditus. Epaphroditus. I'm going to have to say that a few times to get it. (laughs) But Epaphroditus brings a gift, and Paul says, "Great, let me write this letter of encourage back encouragement back." Mm. And he starts with Thanksgiving. Um, So, what does generosity lead into? it leads into a partnership in the gospel. Yeah. That's how he describes it. He says, I thank you in every prayer because of your partnership in the gospel. That's cool. And so actually first lesson uh, that I'm picking up on is when we're generous, when we 
don't hold on to, to money tightly or time tightly or things like that. And we give over. That's actually a partake in what God is doing and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm, and that's I, my first lesson. <laughs> mate, you're spitting. Because honestly, like even with the, the way that the early church started, if you look at Acts 2, mm. they gathered, it was a group of believers that gathered together. They shared what they had, whether it would be food or finance or time or prayer. They shared with each other and actually like mm. throughout the gospels and even in, throughout other letters that Paul writes, he talks about the power of unity and how when we're united as believers, God shows up, like he will move mm. and he'll do things. And I think through here, Paul is almost in an abundance of gratitude because they're partnering with him in the gospel because that's where God shows up. God shows mm. up, yes, with one person, but how much more can he show up when we all gather together and we all work together to spread this message? So I feel like that's what he's yeah. thinking. And how awesome is it that we get to partner with the gospel? Make it crazy. The gospel is not just a distant story. Yeah. Actually, we're invited to partner with it which is really cool. I love it. And I love the next scripture, which is um, because he who began a great work in you mm. will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Do you ever feel like you're stuck? Right now, yes. Right now, you're feeling <laughs> stuck. What, we're chatting to me? <laughs> you're like, I need to get out of here. <laughs> no, in life. Mm. Yeah, like, I mean, even as like a young person, like as a young adult, sometimes you can feel stuck in like, what am I doing in this season? Mm. What am I doing with my life? You know, everyone has their own timelines. Society gives us timelines on what we should do. And if you feel like you're not where you're meant to be, you can feel stuck. Because if I'm not where I'm meant to be, then I'm stuck right here because I can't get there. Um, can be stuck in your thoughts, negative self-talk, negative patterns. I feel like it's so easy to become stuck. Um, but how much more for Paul? Like he wasn't stuck out of choice. He was stuck out of being in prison. Like mm. he was forced to be where he, he was. And yet, even still being in a place of feeling stuck, he had so much gratitude and mm. so much thanks. And that makes me check myself because, yeah, there might be moments in my life where I feel stuck, mm. but there's actually so much more to be happy about and to be grateful for and to be thankful for, mm. rather than just focusing on the negatives. Because he could have opened this letter and been like, guys, I'm struggling. Like, I know you guys sent me money, but I'm still in prison. And like, this, mm. this sucks. And like, oh, I can't go outside. I can't share the gospel in the way that I really want to. But actually he starts, he's like, no, I thank God every time I remember you guys. Wow. Because actually, even though I am stuck, you guys and this, this partnership we have in this unity, it brings joy to me because mm. I know that we're all united for this one thing. Mm. So I think it's about perspective. Like, mm. even though you are stuck, there are other things that you can focus on which I think Paul does so well. And there's such a hope as well. Mm. It's like for one day, yeah. it will be brought to completion. Like although there's trials, although there, there's stuff, we, we've begun the good work. Mm. There is a hope that one day it will be fulfilled. One day the good work will be complete, um, mm. which is really helpful in That's times. Really good. Um, have you got a story of being stuck and feeling stuck, but seeing freedom? <sighs> yeah. I mean, when I was so random but when I was applying to university um like in the way that it works in the UK you apply to five universities and then they either accept you or reject you and mm. then you get to pick your top two right so I was applying I was like yeah yeah yeah, cool god and this is just after I'd given my life to god again mm. so I was like, okay god like we're in this thing I'm gonna be running for you but these are the dreams that I have by the way just letting you know but I'm gonna be running for you and I applied to like my top two unis right and there was one that I thought I wasn't going to get. So I applied, but I was just like, okay, whatever. I didn't get that one. And then there was one that I was like, okay, cool. This is the highest stakes, but God, this is it. This is the one that you're going to give me. And I specifically remember like the week that um, decisions came around and the unis like put through whether you got accepted or rejected. I was sitting in class on my laptop, refreshing that UCAS page, like kept refreshing it. And I just saw like the bright red rejection and I closed my laptop. And I just sat for like five minutes and I was like, oh damn, like I actually got rejected. That door closed, um, put all my eggs in that one basket and now that's it. And I just panicked, mm. I panicked. I remember I didn't, I, that was at the beginning of the day. I didn't even finish the rest of my classes. I ran home, I ran straight upstairs. I locked myself in my room and I just cried. Wow. And that was on, I think that was on a Tuesday. I stayed at home Wednesday, stayed at home Thursday. I didn't want to go back to school. And I remember on that Friday, my history teacher, cause I applied to do history, my history teacher, she emailed me and she was like, you haven't come in. I think I know why. She was like, I want you to come and see me in my office on Friday. So I came in and she gave me like the biggest hug. And she was like, 
there is hope. Mm. She was like, this is not the be all and end all. And she's not, I don't even think she was even a Christian, but I genuinely felt God speak through her to me. And I remember after I met with her, I went with one of my friends who's a Christian, shout out to Candace, she's amazing. Um, we both got rejected from the same uni and she said, no, let's go to the prayer room. Let's pray together. Mm. And I honestly, I couldn't bring myself to be in front of God in that moment. I felt so embarrassed, but I said, you know what? Okay, cool. Let me actually walk out this faith that I believe in, this God that I say I believe in. Mm. Let me actually speak to him. I went in the prayer room and I wept. I wept in front mm. of the Lord and I said, God, if this isn't what you have for me, if this is not what you want for me, I'm going to let mm. it go and I'm actually okay. If you're going to redirect me, redirect me, cool. Bro, within two hours, I got a notification from you, Cass, telling me that my last uni, the one that I didn't even think I was going to get into, not only did they accept me, but they gave me an offer lower than what I was, they were asking for originally. Wow. And like in that moment, I realized that, okay, cool. God comes through, his plans are way bigger than mine, but also even at the moments where I feel stuck mm. and I feel like, oh my gosh, God, there's no way out. Like the path that was in front of me is now gone. Mm. If you just focus on Jesus, he'll make any path straight. That is what I learned that day. So now I don't, I don't question God. I'm like, if I feel stuck and I feel like I don't know where to move, no, I'm going to wait for him. Yeah. I'm going to wait. I'm going to seek him. I'm going to pray. I'll weep. I'll look ugly in front of God because I know he'll come through. Wow. Like I believe it now because I've seen it. Yeah, it's so, great. yeah. Yeah. And it just make it does make me think about the passage we'll read later mm. um, where Paul writes, uh, you know, I would much rather not be on this earth. To die is gain. Yeah. He's like, I would much rather be with Jesus, but I know I'm meant to be here because there's a fruit and there's a plan. Mate. And like, there are totally moments where I feel just stuck mm. and like unaware at how God could even have that straight path. And even in moments where I'm waiting on God and I'm waiting and I'm trusting, and I still can't see his fruition. Mm. And we just got to know it's the truth. It's like one, the, the good works only just began. Yes. Uh, freedom is coming. Um, yes. Mate, thanks for sharing that. That's epic. We, there's a few more uh, passages um, going from verse eight. Let me just read it. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it's my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. Man, we're offered to more and more love. Mm. And more and more abounding of his love. And it's cool because you hear like, oh yeah, the love of God, the love of God changes everything, the love of God. It literally does. It says in scripture, love abounds more and more. And what it comes with is knowledge and prayer. Uh, oh, discernment. hang on. Knowledge and discernment yeah. uh, that we may approve what's excellent and be pure and blameless. Mm. People want to be pure. People want to be blameless. There is this heart cry because sin is ugly and yeah. it's gross and we choose it sometimes, but we know that it's wrong. People have this longing for purity and this longing to be blameless. Mm. How do we get there? We spend time with Jesus. We mm. receive his love. We abound in it more and more. Mm. And people are confused. People are struggling with decisions. They, they, they don't know what to do. How do you get there? How do you figure out decisions? You spend time in this love and it leads to knowledge and it leads to discernment. That's so good. It's so practical. It's yeah. like Paul's literally like, okay, if you're struggling with confusion, if you're struggling with falling into sin, if you're struggling with all this, receive his love more and more and it will change. That's so good. And that's just like a practical step for us. We can just sit with God. We can listen, we can read. And that for us will shape us. Mate, that's good. I think it even goes back to the idea of partnership, right? Mm. Like Paul talks about here that he's partnering with the church of Philippi. Mm. But we also partner with God in our relationship with God. People think, oh, if you serve God, then you have no say. Like he's just ruling over your life. Mm, actually, kind of not true. God actually invites us into a relationship. It takes two to tango, you know, God will give us something and we give to God. Like it's a two way thing. It's a partnership. We're actively involved in our relationship with God and what God's doing in our lives. Um, and I think, yeah, that's it. Like when you're confused or when, when you're doubting or when, when you feel stuck, partner with God, like mm, seek great. God, like talk to him, be with mm. him, like be an active member of this relationship, mm. you know, um, God wants to be in relationship with us and our souls yearn for that as well. So mm. press into it. And it describes grace as, 
uh, being something you can partake in, mm. says earlier. We hear all these things about grace, which is really awesome. Like grace, grace covers us, grace sets us free. Mm. Um, the grace of God is beautiful uh, and we're invited to be partakers in that. It's active. Grace isn't passive. It's active. Yeah. We can choose to step into it as well. And we can choose to neglect it. Um, yeah, gosh, <laughs> hectic. <Hey. laughs> should, should we move into the next section? I mean, we're, um, we're spitting right now. We're going. Should we go to verse going. 12? Do you want to read it? Verse 12 to 17. Though, what, what translation is that? NIV, mate. NIV. All right. Are That's you, fine. Are you hating on the translation? No, nope, no. Nope. I'm just an ESV boy. Through and through. Humble. Humble. humble? Why does that make me humble? <laughs> mate, you need to be humble. That I would need that humble heart. Mate, I love that NIV. I'm being called out on I'm, camera. I'm, I'm, on. on camera. What's going on? on? Iron sharpens iron. Mate. You, <laughs> Why? you need to be humble. What? What the heck? What did I do? <laughs> love that. Do you know what I love? Yeah, you know when you're friends with someone that knows the Bible, then they all bring it out on you. Like he just the iron sharpens iron. I love doing that. Anyway, it's cool. I'll read through. I haven't had that with you yet. Mate, mate, that's crazy. I'm right. joking. Zenya just <laughs> picks Bible all the time. He's she's saying I wise. don't know the Bible. Guys, this is the first time I'm reading Philippians. I'm joking. That was a joke. That was a joke. So I'm going to read verses 12 to 17. Mm -hmm. And it says, now I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that what has happened to me has actually served to advance the gospel. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without mm. fear. It wow. is true that some preach Christ out of envy and rivalry, but others out of goodwill. The latter do so out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. The former preach Christ out of selfish ambition, not sincerely, supposing that they can stir up trouble for me while I'm in chains. I might actually have to read that last read verse. The last verse. But what does it matter? The important thing is that in every way, whether from false motives or true, Christ is preached. And mm. because of this, I rejoice. Mm. Dang. First thoughts. I mean, I kind of struggle with that sometimes. I mean, mm. oh, it's hard. I mean, even in our culture today, right? Like I don't want to be woke and stuff, but like cancel culture is a real thing, right? If you say something on social media that might not, you know, some people might not like instantly you're gone, you're canceled. Um, not just in social media, but even in the church, we see it sometimes. Um, and so even with preaching the, the gospel, like, is there a right, a right way to do it? Like, mm. you know, those people that you see maybe in like busy cosmopolitan cities that stand and they're with signs and they're like, if you don't believe in Jesus, like this is going to happen to you. Some people actually do get saved from that, but then other people criticize it and be like, nah, man, you can't shout the Bible at people. You got to have relationship with people. And so like, even what Paul is saying here is that some people preach it out of, you know, selfish ambition because they want to get something and some people do it selflessly but either way it doesn't matter because the gospel is still being preached mm. but I, I do struggle with that sometimes because I'm like not everyone wants to be shouted at well yeah I used to I used to be, use this scripture mm. almost to combat formats of evangelism mm. and be like oh no this is a bad format because it creates hurt this is a bad format this is the good format mm. like this is what you should do um and just like rereading it over and over, I'm realizing that, that Paul doesn't focus in on a specific format. Like he doesn't go, some indeed preach Christ from the streets and that is wrong. Or some, some of you cre preach Christ in your work zone, that is wrong, or in a nightclub and that is wrong. No, he says out of envy and rivalry. Mm. And that's the category which is being put as wrong envy and rivalry like what does that look like what does it look like for someone to preach out of envy what does it look like for people to preach out of rivalry and it, even thinking about the, the church in philippi at the time that he's writing to uh, there's a lot of divisions in the church there's mm. basically rivalry between different people um and what he's saying is is maybe what he's speaking into is people are literally just preaching to show up in comparison to others mm. um and i think we can use that like as evangelists ourselves yeah. it's like I don't, I sometimes see different formats and people preaching on the streets, which I don't always think is wise. And I, I can sometimes be like a little mm. uh, freaked out by it, but like what's causing that? Is it, is it something that's like almost jealous? Is it something that's almost right. like prideful thinking that my way of evangelism is greater than theirs? Cause if they're going and doing that, the truth is there's probably a deep conviction and a deep, um, yeah. 
a deep like stirring like there's such zeal uh excitement when people do that mm. like i wish i was that passionate sometimes mm. um and so for us when we look at it i guess sometimes we just be like okay when i'm preaching am i doing it from a place of like jealousy and envy over someone else doing it or rivalry to up them or am i doing it because i want to be servant hearted and i want to see salvation and i want to honor god you know um i also love that he's he points out the fact that him being imprisoned paul one of the like one of the ma- most um i don't know known evangelists mm. or like preachers is in prison and you think oh man surely the gospel's like being not being preached anymore surely this is going to be bad but actually it says um the rest uh, most of the brothers have become confident in the lord because of my imprisonment and much more bold to speak the word without fear dang so like sometimes stuff that seems like wrong and stuff yeah. that seems bad and like captivating that you can't um that's i don't know, seem like it's not going to work or seem like it's not a good thing that i'm waffling a little bit but you know what i mean yeah, yeah. sometimes when we look at situations and we're like wow that must be bad actually the god's at working to a deeper level and has a wider plan and is doing a deeper thing which is quite encouraging as well because i can get caught mm. up in my situation paul could have been like man i'm in prison the gospel's not going to be preached and then he like receives a letter which says since your imprisonment the gospel's being preached more and it's like wow there's things are bigger than him things yeah. are bigger than us i have a lot of thoughts man i mean this kind of reminds me kind mm. of of in genesis with joseph and how joseph was put in prison and actually there were like two palace guards that were in the prison with him and they were having dreams and they were like, oh, I can't interpret this. Like, I don't know what this is saying. And they speak to Joseph and Joseph is the only one that can hear from God clearly mm. about dream interpretation. And he tells them what's gonna happen and what that he says is gonna happen actually does happen. And then that allows Joseph to actually be brought out of the palace to then tell the king, hey, listen, there's this guy that's in the in the prisons. He can interpret dreams and the king's having dreams. And the guards were like, I think you need to speak to Joseph. And mm. then the king speaks to Joseph and then that elevates him and he gets to like help him lead, lead the Egyptians. Mm. But I think out of that, like this really reminds me of that. The fact that even though Joseph was in prison and he thought this might be it for me, he was able to minister to people, to those guards, the same way that Paul is here. So mm. I just thought, of that mm. um that comparison it's funny how like there's different parts of scripture that kind of emulate and like mirror um and the other thing i was going to say was to that point you made about how we can be in situations and think oh it's all doom and gloom like this mm. is it like god's not going to be able to use me the gospel's not going to be advanced but then actually it is mm. um when jesus um get comes on the scene and like people start to know who he is i think it's in matthew um, where one of the disciples, well, before he became a disciple was like, oh, this guy from Nazareth, like can anything good come from Nazareth? And then you have Jesus who literally saves the world, mic drop, you know, mm. restores us back to God. But it's that thing of like, nothing good could come from Nazareth. And yet it does like a place where there was ho- like hopelessness and despair, mm. but actually God, the Messiah shows up. And even in prison, a place where there's mm. hopelessness, there's despair for Paul. God shows up mm. and still the message of the gospel is proclaimed. Like mm. God knows no bounds. It's crazy. Mm. And yeah, be encouraged, like whatever mm. environment you're in, yeah, don't wait for the right moment to talk about Jesus or yeah. like spread the gospel. Paul had the, probably the right moments, the crowds outside of prison and it was great. And then when he was in prison, he could have been like, okay, the moment's gone. No, look around you. There were prison guards who didn't know Jesus and he shared the gospel to them. So if you're in an environment and people don't know Jesus and they're broken and they're sad, don't be afraid to tell them about God's love because God's love is the best thing in the world. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, just the encouragement, like step out. I love it. Right. Next section That's and good. final section. Guys, thank you for staying with us. I know this is quite meaty. I know it's quite full. Um, we just good. really love this book yeah. and we want to go into it and like explore it. Hey, so yeah. Um, I'm going to pass it back to you. Can you read the next bit? Mate, yeah. let's go. Where should we oh, wait, go? Oh, wait, no, it's NRV. I'll do it. No, <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> Crazy. For everyone listening that for like loves the NIV, mate, they're going to be hurt by that one. Mm. That's going to stroke some of his weight. Right. Where am I reading? Uh, let's go from 19. Yeah. Till whenever you feel. And I will continue to rejoice for I know that through your prayers and God's provision of the spirit of Jesus Christ, what has happened to me will turn out for my deliverance. I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, 
but will have sufficient courage so that now and always Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I'm going to li if I'm going on, hey, shambalizer, if I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yeah, what shall I choose? I don't know. I'm torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is by far better. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for the progress and joy in the faith. So that though by so that though my being with you again, your boasting in Christ Jesus will abound mm. on account of me. Mm. Let's pause there. Yeah. Dang. Mate, that's heavy. That is heavy. What are you thinking? Mate, he said, I don't know what to choose. I'm torn between the two. I want to leave you and be with Christ, but actually I should remain in the body because it's mm. more necessary. Man, Paul actually knows how to let go. He knows how to let go and let God's will be the will for his life. Because I know sometimes for me, mate, if there's a choice between the two, I know which choice I'm picking. I'm picking the one that I want. But actually what we want is not always the best thing for the gospel. I mean, if we, are, mm. if we really believe in the Great Commission to go out and share the gospel with all nations, if we really believe in the good mm. news of Jesus, that should be the most important thing that we mm. that we share, that we live by. And mm. so our wills and our desires actually should pale in comparison to God's will, mm. um, which I think Paul does so well here. He's like, listen, I'd rather just die. Yeah. I'd rather go be with my Lord and Savior. Yeah. But actually I'm going to choose the, ro the route that will cost me the most, which is to actually stay and mm. fight for this thing and to share the gospel and to plant more churches and do all those things. Mm. Mate, I wish we could we could learn a bit from that. Mm. I mean, I think the first thing to learn from it, to gain this kind of selflessness mm. and this humility and submission to God is having an eternal mindset. Right. The first thing that's said is like to live is Christ and to die is gain. Mm. If that's the mindset that he's got, his perspective of life is so small compared to his perspective of God. Right. And we actually need to learn from that. We need to think, okay, I need to like kill and like put to death things and desires that for this earth and for this time mm. that are my own. And how do we do that? We take a look at God and his majesty and gain a bigger picture of what he invites us to in the future and who he is now and what he invites us to now. It's like that. I think that's the first lesson. And that's the way that leads into that submission is that's to know it. God and know God truly. Final passage. And, and the final few that we've come to the end. This is amazing. I Mate, mean, we're about quick. It's Not really easy to do a podcast on the Bible. It's really easy just, to read. We just read it. Or facts. <laughs> and it like teaches us. We don't even have to add much. But um, the final yeah. uh, section, I can read it, is only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Mm. So that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God, and that is from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you shall not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same time, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. I mean, first thing that we can pick up on is where it says, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Mm. Like mannerisms, how am I acting? How am I being? How am I in relationship to people? Is it worthy of the gospel? Is it worthy of the message of Jesus? We read uh, also in the Bible where it talks about Christ's example of humility. His example is submitting himself to the world and like giving up his life for us. Yeah. And so if that's the gospel story, Christ giving all for us, that should be our manner we, I love <laughs> for it. others. It's like, and we, we've come back to this theme a few times of just like this uh, getting rid of selfish ambition mm. and being this person of selflessness. And um, I think that's the, the gospel message that we can live by and let our manners become that's one one of the messages i mean there's so many others have you got any yeah and, and i think it even links to the part where he says to stand firm in one spirit right i mean mm. if you're standing firm in one spirit striving together as one another for the faith of the gospel mm. it's like even if i have 
you know, if I have harbored feelings of jealousy, if I have harbored feelings of envy, mm. actually laying that aside, because the most important thing is to stand in one spirit. Yeah. And I think especially in the times where Paul writes to these different churches, some of them went through lots of persecution and mm. like, it was hard for them to stand in one spirit because mate, if they catch, if the authorities catch me worshiping this Jesus, I might die mm. or I might be put in prison or whatever the context is. But actually there is so much power in unity. Mm. And I love that Paul stands on that and preaches that whilst mm. he's also in prison. I think it's so important that like, we keep bringing up the fact that he's in prison, but context is everything. And I think when you actually understand that Paul was in a place of isolation, mm. he didn't have people standing around him. He was by himself. Mm. And yet from a place of loneliness, a place of um, isolation, he was able to not mm. only preach the gospel, but encourage others that could have been scattered and could have been isolated, that they should focus on unity. I think that's so powerful. I really like it. It's like mm. put away your, and it, like it says, um, it says without being frightened in any way of what, what comes against you, what opposition yeah. you have, how easy is it to, to shrink back mm. in fear of what other people may, may say about trying to preach the gospel, whether you're in school or whether it's your family or whether it's the workplace, like being mm. scared of what other people might say or their judgment might cause you to shrink back, but actually no, like step out in one spirit, in one mm. faith, step out in unity together and mm. preach the gospel, even if you face opposition. Mm. Cause actually like Paul says, you shouldn't be frightened by it, mm. which is mad. Yeah. And I think, Wow, it's just so awesome. Mm. And it's so encouraging to hear that there's such faith from a church which is suffering. Mm. And, you know, you read these stories and you read uh, these relationships and these dynamics. And from what we read, we can kind of gather this perspective that it's kind of normal to know someone who's been or being persecuted because mm. of their faith. Mm. And then we look at our, our story, I don't know, me and you, like sure we've had difficulties, sure we've had trials and we've, you know, we look at cancel culture and it's scary sometimes. And, you know, we, we might have people in school making bullying comments and, you know, we've both talked about our testimonies where we've actually struggled a lot with our faith in, in friendship. Mm. But then you compare it, not that it's about comparison, but you, you compare it to real suffering for his yeah. sake and we go, wow. And you look at Revelation, and it, there's a special place for those who are martyred in heaven and they're crying out for justice. And it says the Lord is an avenger. The Lord will come and he'll, he'll bring this justice. Mm. And it's because he, he loves, uh, he, he doesn't love suffering, but he, he has a heart for us who suffer. Yep. And that's the message as well. That's one of the messages that we can get from this is that God understands suffering. God went through suffering. Uh, he literally died on a cross. He was persecuted. He understands you. It says he's able to sympathize with you mm. in Hebrews 4. It's like yeah. for us watching who f are going through trials, going through things, we can look at the beginning. Uh, there is a hope to come. We, we can feel stuck, but there is a hope that's coming. The good work has just begun. Um, I know it's hard sometimes and the easier thing is to just want to be with Christ. We look at Paul's example of that. Yeah. Lord, I just want to be with Christ. But there is... Uh, there is time for you. There is a hope. There is uh, fruit that is coming. And uh, if God has got you somewhere, he's got you there for a reason. Yep. And he understands what you're going through and he loves you. Mm. And he sees you through it. And He, his heart is to meet with you. And his heart is to walk with you. It says in Psalm 23 that he prepares a table in the presence of your enemies. In dark valleys, he will prepare a table, which is like inviting you to join and sit in your inheritance. Uh, yeah. In two kings, I learned about this yesterday. In two kings... Um, when Jonathan's, uh, Jonathan died, David invites his son, who is like super messed up, like he's got a broken leg and mm -hmm. really disabled, and says, come sit at my table. And basically Jonathan's son goes, ah, oh, I'm not even where, he calls himself a dog. He says, I'm a dog, like how day, and David shows him to fields. And he says, look at these fields. These are yours because you're sat at my table. And wow. that's the table that God is inviting us to. And that is the, the table that we can bring our suffering to and he will sit with you and he'll say, I love you, mm. daughter. I love you, I love son. It. Thank you for going through this for me. Mm. I will give you glory. Mm. I will avenge you. I will see justice happen. And so let's step out as Christians. Let's look at Paul's example. Let's run after like, run after him, run after knowing him more yeah. and run after preaching about him more. Yeah, I think that's so encouraging. I think also just to like round it off, Paul says that, um, 
He says, for it has been granted unto you on behalf of Christ, not only to believe in him, but also to suffer with him. Mm. And so Paul basically says that like, there's two parts to this thing. There's belief mm. and there is suffering. He doesn't say, oh, you might suffer or mm, some of you might go through hard times, but others, no, nah, you're going to have it pretty easy. No, actually like suffering is a package deal with this gospel thing. Mm. Like Jesus suffered mm. and we're going to, even Jesus told the disciples like, People are gonna hate you, but mm. they hated me first. He doesn't say, mm. oh, you might, some of you might face hard times and the others, like everyone's gonna love you. Mm. No, actually like, if you call yourself a believer, if you believe in Jesus, that is going to come with mm. opposition. And even in other books of the Bible that Paul writes, it talks about how we, um, it's not a battle against flesh and blood, but principalities. Like there are things in life that are gonna happen where you're going to go through opposition. But actually Paul says like, it's actually to encourage you a bit mm. because, you're living like Jesus. And as a believer, all we want to do is we want to grow more like Jesus. We want to live like him. Mm. We want to live like Christ. And what did Christ go through? He mm. went through suffering. And mm. so actually, if you're going through hard times, yes, mm. it's hard, but actually that's to encourage you that you're living like Jesus. Mm. And in those moments where things are hard, you draw near to the father like he did, mm. um, like Paul did. Um, and like Paul is encouraging the church in Philippi too. So mm. really encouraging stuff. Yeah. And the thing is, Christ isn't a hypocrite when he says that. Like yep. he says, you know, we have to suffer for him. It's because he suffered with us. Mm. It says in Hebrews 4, the passage I just said, um, Christ is able to sympathize because he went through every temptation yet was without sin. Mm. Um, the other uh, Greek word comes when it says sympathize, comes originally to another translation, which says suffers with. So when it says Christ sympathizes with us, it also means he suffers with us. Wow. He's literally feels what we've been through because he's been there first. Mm -hmm. And so he's not inviting us to fight a battle he hasn't fought before. He's inviting us to join in and partner with him in that. And um, gosh, any final takeaways? 30 second takeaway. You got anything that you want to you wanna bring? 30 second takeaway. <laughs> I don't know. There's is, a lot there. <laughs> what is your perspective? Like, how are you looking at your life? Are you doom and gloom, the glass is half empty, but is, or are you the glass is half full? Actually, God is with me in my battles. Mm. Yeah, that's my takeaway. That's a good takeaway. Have um, you got a takeaway? Have I got a takeaway? Know God and sit with Him and find this love because that leads into all this fruit and all these good attributes come on um spend more time with him than you usually do and see how it changes your life that but anyway um guys thank you so much for watching that was very meaty thank you for sticking around yeah uh we appreciate it a lot and thanks for listening as well for those on the on the spotify or yeah. apple yeah make sure you tune in i think this philippine series is going to be good we've got a new one every week on the next chapters so make sure you any final words let's go for chapter two let's go for chapter two <laughs> see you there yeah.